guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what I got here in this video is the Sony A7 with kit lens. And I'm gonna go over the A7 in a review type fashion in this video. And I'm gonna go over all the settings that you need to know inside the menu and things like that. Uh, first, what I wanted to go over was how much this thing costs. And basically what you're looking at is $1,700 for just the camera body. And it's about 2,000 for the camera body with the kit lens. It's f3.5 to 5.6, 28 to 70. So it's not the fastest aperture lens, but it's relatively small and compact and lightweight. And the zoom, as you can see, is mostly self-contained within the lens. Um, actually 28 millimeter sticks out further than 70, believe it or not. So what we got here, if you look at the top of the A7, we have the exposure comp dial, we have the shutter button here, you have the on and off switch. You have a adjustment here that can be programmed for either the aperture or the shutter speed. You have another dial here, same thing, aperture or shutter speed. You have another dial here, and then you got a custom button, C3 here. You got another one here, C2. Then you have another custom button here. You also have a function button, which is very useful. And then the menu button is up on this side. And, uh, you know, the screen articulates like so. You got the battery door here on the bottom. There's the battery. And it takes the same kind of battery as a, the Sony Nex 6. It's the smaller W series. And the door doesn't shut and lock, unfortunately. You still have to slide this thing over. I don't know why they haven't made that so it just snaps closed. You have to slide this thing every time to get it to lock. I like how when you just shut it, it just clicks closed. Um, I wish it had that, but whatever. Nitpick. Notice this door here, this is where your memory card goes. Instead of it going where the battery goes on the next 6, it goes in the grip, like on the side here. Like so, clicks in there. Um, and then on the other side, you have the ports. Like so, you got the audio ports, the HDMI, and you have the USB, a micro USB to hook up to the computer and things like that. This thing also has Wi-Fi and NFC, so you can hook your phone or your tablet and you can just put it right next to it and it'll suck the data off. You can also turn the camera into a hotspot and then you can talk to it that way or remote control the camera with a smartphone. Um, one other thing I wanted to go over was just the mode dial is right here on this side. Everything is on the right side of the top. There's really nothing over here on the left except the menu button. Of course, you have the OLED viewfinder here, which has the hot shoe on top. And uh, they, you know, it is Sony proprietary. So you're going to have to buy a hot shoe adapter to use, you know, your flash on here if it's not a Sony flash, just so you know. It's full frame. Let me show you the sensor quick. And there's the full frame sensor. All right. Here's the next six next to the A7. So you can just see them both. All right. And then also I wanted to show you the, um, you could easily put lens adapters on here. I have the Metabones 3 lens adapter and my Canon EF lens. And watch how easy this goes on. There we go. So now I have working Canon EFL lens with uh, autofocus and image stabilization. That's pretty awesome. And I've tried it, it does work uh, just like it does on the Next 6. I have a video showing you how it works on the Next 6. It's identical on the A7. And I also have an old school Minolta lens here. I love this lens, my 50 millimeter F1.4 Rocker X lens. And I have a very uh, affordable rainbow imaging adapter. It's really cheap. It was like 16 17 dollars or something for this adapter but uh, it allows you to put old school lenses on here like so and now I have a 1.4 fully manual lens on this camera pretty awesome and the focus peaking and all that stuff makes it easy to focus with manual lenses on this camera just like the next six so extremely versatile and now you have full frame coverage so you get the same versatility, you know, as the Next 6, which a lot of you guys love. I know a lot of you guys have this and you're debating whether to upgrade to the A7 or not. And, you know, you can't go wrong with the Next 6, phenomenal camera. But the A7 is definitely better. There's no doubt about it. The old quality is better. The image quality is better. It is bigger. It's heavier. If you're looking for a lighter weight um, package, you know, the smaller sensor Next 6 is the way to go. The lenses are going to be smaller, lighter weight. The camera body itself is smaller and lighter weight. Um, the lenses are obviously, to cover the full frame sensor, are going to be bigger. So, especially if you get fast lenses, the larger they're going to be and the heavier they're going to be. So, 
you know, you, you're losing a little bit of the pocketability. Not that this is pocketable per se, but if you put a pancake lens on there, it's almost pocketable. You don't really have that option with this camera. It's, it's much bigger overall, the way the OLD sticks out and the uh, grip. Um, a little bit more than the next six, you know, if you look at it from the side. Not much more. Very similar, actually. But it's just bulkier, you know, overall. Uh, the grip does feel better. It took a while for me to get used to it, but I absolutely love it now. And my finger just goes naturally to the shutter where it's supposed to. So all that adjusted. It did take me a little while to adjust, which is normal, because um, it's different than my next six. But I really like it. So that's pretty much it overall with the A7. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing the camera around and I'm gonna show you how to set up the camera and show, explain all the settings in the menu so this way you know exactly what's going on. And um, you know, also after you watch this, if you see something I missed, you know, just say, hey Jay, what about this setting or that setting? And I'll gladly answer it for you. So I'm gonna go over all the major stuff though and show you, you know, everything I think you need to know. So, all right, stay tuned. I'm gonna switch camera angles. All right, guys, here we are at our other angle. And what I'm going to do is just select the menu button. And one of my nitpicks with this camera is the but menu button's a little bit harder to hit here because of this lip. Um, you could kind of see that from this angle. But anyway, I just want to go through the menu settings and show you how I have this camera set up. The image size, I like to go with raw. Well, image quality, I like to go at raw but I like to leave it as large. So if you go to quality here, you can just change that to raw. And that's how I like to shoot. This way you can develop your photos in Lightroom and get the most out of them as far as dynamic range, things like that. The file format for video, that's what this is, the AVC HD. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna leave it at that, but I just wanted to show you it also has MP4. All right, so that's pretty much that. I'm going to move over. You can also shoot uh, quality here. You can do JPEG and RAW if you want, but I'm just shooting RAW just so you know. All right. So I'm just going to go to the next screen. Record setting. This is at your actual video record quality, and I am going to change that to 24. I really don't need to record at 60 frames per second. I prefer using the 24, and uh, it's better quality because it's less compressed than the 60i. Uh, 60p would be the absolute best quality that this camera offers, but again, I don't need the 60 frames per second, so I'm just going to go with the 24, and that's how I have mine set. So it warns you that the bandwidth is extremely, you know, a lot, and you'll need to burn it to a Blu-ray disc at that quality. That's what that message is. All these other settings are just the basic camera settings, and I'll go over that a little more when I get into the function menu and things like that. So all this stuff I just have set to default. All right, same thing with this area. Everything is set to default. Same thing in here with the uh, metering. The only option in here I wanted to show you in particular was this dynamic range optimizer slash auto HDR. Right now that is turned on to dynamic range optimize and it's set to auto, see that? I'm gonna turn that off. I just prefer to have that off because I don't want it to brighten the images up and create more noise, which is basically what it does. It, it usually fills in the shadow area and brightens it a little bit, but it just adds noise. So I'm just gonna turn that off for now. And down here, um, I'm gonna go to long exposure noise reduction, and I'm gonna turn that off. It just takes forever to, when you take a long exposure, your camera will just sit there and try to denoise the image and it, you know, it slows you down. It is good if you're shooting JPEG and you want low noise, but overall I prefer to do that in post-processing. So I turn that feature off. The lock on AF is basically if you want to track an object, that's what that stands for. So you can click that and then whatever object you have in front of the camera, it'll lock on and then it'll track it. So that's what that lock on AF is for. Uh, smile face detect, you're going to want to go in here in my opinion, and you're going to want to turn this on. Face detection on. Now you can see there's a box there. See how it came up? And then if you hit the center button by default, that will trigger the eye AF. See that little eye coming up? See that? So you know the eye is sharp. And notice how it goes from eye to eye. Pretty cool feature and it definitely works. So um, face detection you're going to want on, especially if you're taking pictures of kids. It helps you focus so much and it also will adjust the exposure and things like that to make sure that that's as accurate as possible. So I highly recommend having that turned on. Go back to the menu. 
Soft skin effect is kind of cool too, but again, all those things only work if you're in JPEG mode because it's basically post-processing on the camera. All right, so that's what uh, all those features do. All those creative modes and everything, they're all for if you're shooting in JPEG mode, and it's basically the camera doing the post-processing for you. Very cool if you're uh, in a rush and don't want to do it yourself, for sure. So if you go in uh, number six here and scroll down, steady shot is turned on, color space, I'm gonna change that to Adobe RGB. It's a wider color gamut, and you'll get better color rendition, in my opinion, if you use that mode. However, don't use this mode if you're just taking JPEG photos and uploading directly to the internet because Adobe RGB is not recognized by a lot of browsers. Although, a lot of websites now do recognize it, like Google+, Plus, I believe you could now upload in that profile. But uh, again, I would, I would only if you're using like a Lightroom or another program to process your images, would I change this to Adobe RGB because it's a wider color gamut. But again, you don't want to get into trouble if you're just directly uploading your JPEGs. You're going to want to have this set to sRGB if you're directly uploading to the internet and not post-processing your images. Because what I do, for example, is I go into Lightroom, I'll edit my images, and then I'll save them out as a JPEG in sRGB color space, and then I'll upload it to the web. So I'm not letting the camera do that for me. I want all that color in Lightroom, and then I'll save it out as a sRGB after I'm done working with it. So that's why I choose that setting, the method to the madness there. Let me move over here. Auto slow shutter. That'll just slow the shutter speed down if you're recording video, and your uh, shutter speed gets below one thirtieth or one twenty fourth of a second depending on what video format you're recording at this will automatically keep recording and just slow it down alright so moving on to the menu options which it looks like a little gear here uh, we got the zebra that's for video I have that turned off we have the manual focus assist I have that turned on focus magnify time you're gonna to wanna to change that to no limit in my opinion default is two seconds that's when you're using manual lenses you can basically magnify the scene and preview it at a much at a highly magnified fashion and it's much easier to nail the focus and get it just right grid line I like to have that set to rule of thirds so I'm gonna turn that on and auto review and audio level display that's a default I'm just gonna leave that display button that's all peaking I'm gonna turn that on I'm gonna put it on medium this helps you with manual focusing I'm also gonna turn it to yellow so focus peaking level I have on medium or mid and the peaking color I have on yellow. Exposure set guide I have that set to on. Live view display I have that setting set to on. And what that does just so you know if you're using um, manual mode and you're in a studio environment you're going to want to have this option here set to off. All right. Right here you're going to want to set that to off and what that's going to do is it's going to make your live view display act act like an optical viewfinder basically it's just gonna go as bright as it can in a dark environment and allow you to see like what you're seeing with the human eye that's what this setting effect does and when it's on like this it doesn't do that when it's on it, it shows you exactly what it's gonna look like when you take the picture not what it looks like to the human eye so that's what that option is and it's very important if you're ever gonna use your camera in the studio and in manual mode you're gonna wanna have this setting effect turned to off okay um, phase detection area, I have that set to off. All that does is it brings up the grid on the screen here. When you look at the screen, it'll, it'll actually bring up all the phase detection AF points, and it just kind of clutters the screen. So I'm gonna leave that set to off. I have it on on my next six, and it, it does kind of clutter the screen. Um, on the next option here, number three, we have this pre-AF option. And what that does is it tells the camera to focus even when you're not doing anything. Like right now, if I move the camera, it's going to focus automatically on the ceiling. See that? And if I move it back, it's going to focus on And I didn't even touch anything. That's what that feature does, pre-AF. If you turn that feature off, you're going to save yourself a lot of battery life. But the camera might not necessarily be ready to go when you aim it. See right now, it's not ready to go, so I have to actually focus it to get it. And now when I put it back, it's not going to focus on Layla. I have to actually hit the button to get it to focus. So that's what the pre-AF does, okay? Zooming, I have that set to optical zoom only. Release without lens. Oh, you can turn the, the monitor off, this LCD display. You can just turn it off if you want. That's what that feature does. Great feature for when needed. 
Release without lens. This feature is enabled by default, which is nice. And what it does is if you hook up a fully manual lens to this camera, it, the camera's gonna say, hey, what, what do you have hooked up there? I don't see any electronics. And this will allow you to fire. It'll allow the shutter to take the picture even though it thinks there's no lens attached. And that's what this release without lens means. So that's what that feature is. All right, so that's pretty much it. Everything else I have set to default. And then we got auto exposure lock with shutter, that's set to auto. The electronic front curtain, I like to have that set to on. It basically allows the camera to take a picture a little bit faster so the shutter doesn't have to go up and down twice. So I would have that set to on. Exposure comp set, that's just, everything's on default here. I'm just gonna leave that all on default, no reason to change it. Let me go to five. Face registration. This is where you can register faces. I could like register Layla's face, for example, and then set it to a priority so it always focuses on her face. That's where these options are, face registration area. This is if you're going to use APS-C size capture. This is if you want to use your camera in crop factor mode. Right now it's set to auto, but um, you can change it and force it on. And now the camera is in crop factor mode. See that? It looks like I'm zoomed in more, except I'm not. So you can kind of get free zoom out of the camera with this feature, which is pretty darn powerful if you ask me. I'm going to go back to auto here. And now if I show you, see how it zoomed back out? Now I'm back to full frame mode. So that is a cool feature, especially if you want to, if you're using a telephoto lens and you want more reach. But uh, oh, also another feature why that, one other reason why that's cool is because you can put other e-mount lenses on here, crop factor camera e-mount lenses and you know get them to work as if you're using a next six or whatever so that's another great feature the uh, af micro adjustment this is if you have an issue with really fast lens or if the lens autofocus is slightly off as far as it relates to the camera you can actually adjust for that on a per lens basis in here it's a very powerful feature and i'm really glad that this camera has it built in it's uh, often only on pro cameras uh, this being a higher end camera it comes with it so it makes sense Lens compensation, this will basically correct for chromatic aberrations and shading, things like that, automatically. And that's, you can have that turn that off, turn it on. That's what that is. All right, function menu set. That's if you hit this function button here. You see all these options on the bottom here? You have tons of functions and you can, you can change all of these. You can program them to whatever you want. And that's what this is in the menu when you see function menu settings. You can go in there and actually change all those settings. Custom key settings, that's the same thing. You can change these custom keys, C2, C3, and C1. You can change all those. I'm going to actually leave them all at default because it actually works really well as is. I kind of like it at default, believe it or not. And then uh, you can change your dial set, this dial here versus this dial here with your pointer. You can change those. Like I said, one can be aperture, one can be shutter and or f-stop you know and shutter you could switch those if you want depending on your shooting style or if you're coming from another camera manufacturer and you're used to it being set up that way uh, great feature a lot a lot of options in here the movie button you can turn that off right now i have it set to always dial wheel is set to unlock that's this wheel here so you can lock that if you don't want if you you know if you constantly hit it with your thumb you could lock that if you're afraid you're going to hit it by accident for example so in here in the menu, this is the Wi-Fi area, connect connectivity area, I should say. And you can control a bunch of things in here, including, you know, send to smartphone, send to computer, view on TV, one-touch NFC. But the feature I'm going to enable is the airplane mode feature. And this will ensure that I don't accidentally turn on the Wi-Fi and drain batteries, things like that. One-touch NFC, for example... You can just hold your camera up or your smartphone right to the camera and it'll suck the images off. So all those features and stuff, if you have it on airplane mode on, all that'll be turned off and you won't have to worry about, you know, like I said, accidentally draining the battery. In here, you can set up your access point where you can basically have the camera act as a hotspot. Excuse me. And then you can <clears throat> connect to it with your smart device and, you know, communicate with it that way. A uh, great feature for remote control things like that. You can control your camera with using applications. Um, but you know, the access point is the first step in that process. So also it's great for upgrading the camera, things like that. Um, you can also change your SSID, create a custom one, you know, so you can find it easier. Pretty uh, powerful. The next tab over is the application area. I don't have any applications installed. 
and I would do that in a different tutorial anyways uh, probably on my next six I'm gonna stick more to the camera itself but in here is where the application list would be if they were installed on the camera so anyways in, in the next tab over is the play and that's where you can delete your photos and view, review them you can also do a slideshow and stuff like that there's an option in here to enlarge images um, you can protect them specify printing order if you're doing that right from your camera so these are the features that pretty much I don't know anybody that uses them but um, they're there and then in the suitcase over here you have a bunch of other features monitor brightness you can change that it's set to manual all the other settings I have at default Tile menu, you can turn that on and change the menu system, make it look more like the next. I would leave that off. Mode dial guide, I have that off as well. Display quality actually is what I wanted to show you here. Standard, I'm going to change that to high. It is going to use a little bit more battery life, but um, it's worth the quality on the viewfinder in my opinion. So I'm going to change that to high. Power start time, you can change that so your camera will shut off quicker, you know, automatically. I like one minute's pretty good. Cleaning mode, this is where you can force your camera to clean the uh, sensor a little bit. It just shakes it and it'll help get dust off. Good to do that every once in a while. That's where that is. A bunch of HDMI options in here you can control. When you're using a remote control, you actually can enable that in here. Right now it's set to off, so your camera will work in remote control mode when you enable that. USB connections, a couple more settings in here. Date and time, area setting if you need to change your area. Format, this is great for formatting the memory card. This is a feature I use all the time. The rest of this stuff is just default and you know you can create folders and rename folders, things like that. Display media info, this is pretty cool if you want to see how much space you have left on your card and or how much time you can record video. That's what that is. Version, that'll tell you what version your camera's at, software wise and lens. And setting reset, that's how you can set the camera back to factory default. All right, so now I just want to show you how the camera works when you're actually taking a picture here. I'm kind of limited because I can't move the camera so much, but um, just looking at the screen, you can see all the different settings all around the screen there. Note how the exposure comp is at plus 0.3 there, and you can change that with this dial here on the right. And raise that, lower that, and you can see it reflecting on the bottom. I'm in aperture priority mode, just so you know. So if I change this wheel, my thumb, notice the aperture is changing. The wheel on the back is changing the aperture also. So in aperture priority mode, both wheels change the aperture. C2, if you hit that, you can change your AF mode. Right now it's set to single shot. This is continuous. This is direct manual focus, manual focus. S single shot AF is the way to go, in my opinion, because you can toggle manual focus right here with this button. If you just hit this button, you can toggle manual focus see that and then if you actually focus the lens it'll magnify zoom for you so you can fine-tune it and then you can just take the shot boom and when you press the shutter button halfway the box comes up you could see that facial recognition and when you hit the center button here on the mode dial my thumb so that IAF is working you can see it on Layla's eye there all right Oh, the function button. If you hit the focus, or a function button rather, that'll bring you into this area. And the function area is great because it, it gives you a lot, of, a lot of the settings you might need and you won't have to go so deep into the menu. You know, the focus area, for example, you can turn on dynamic range, you can adjust that, white balance, uh, metering mode, that's a great option. You can go in there and change your metering mode. Right, average is good for you know normal if you're you know normal scenes if you want to protect the highlights and things like that or it's called multi mode multi metering mode average metering mode is another word for it then you got center weight average here spot metering spot metering is great if you need to make sure that you get the exposure perfect in a in a certain area of an image you select spot metering and you can really get it perfect that's what that's for but most of the time I use average some a lot of a lot of times I might use center weight for um, if I'm doing portraits and stuff like that just so focuses on the center it makes it a little bit easier a lot of times the background will be distracting it just seems to um, limit the exposure you know variables a lot on the camera and it overall works better for portraits a lot of times I find but otherwise I usually use multi so let me just hit the function again 
you can also, I wanted to show you the focus area. Oh yeah, check this out. If you go to the focus area here the, and then hit the center button, you can now sc scroll down and you can z uh, select your zone. This is a pretty cool feature. See how I'm just moving it? So you can move your focus zone kind of like that. You can move it up and down, left and right. And then center here, if you select that, you can it'll just be in the center. This one here is flexible spot. If you select that, you can actually move your focus point around. See that? So that's a good feature. Use that all the time. Great for macro and other things. Go back to that. And, you know, overall, that's pretty much it. If you want to review your photos, you hit the play button down here. And, you know, the optical viewfinder, if you put your eye up to it, notice how it automatically switches. So that's how that goes. And you also have custom modes up here and panorama modes. Custom modes are two in one. You can basically program anything you want in this area and then just go to your number one or number two and your settings will be, you know, recalled. So you can have one setting for sports, for example, and another setting for landscapes or something like that. So one would be F-16 for landscapes, say, and then the one for sports would be, you know, a faster aperture and maybe a, a faster shutter speed using shutter priority mode, perhaps, you know, things like that. So these memory recall features are great if you really want to just get your camera to specific settings very quickly and you want to you could program them have pre, it's like a preset for your camera settings and and i would recommend setting them up if you like to use different settings often Alright guys, well that's pretty much it for this uh, Sony A7 review, so if you have any questions please feel free to ask. I hope you guys have a great day, have a great holiday. I'm going to be you know, working on the actual write-up review after I get this video put up, so stay tuned for that. And please feel free to click the links below if you want to support Sony Alpha Lab, that would be greatly appreciated. Have a great day. Alright, take care. Bye -bye.